What's up everyone and welcome to the vlog. This is the video for our third Influencer Academy live event. This one's gonna be way different than the last one. We have so many amazing, incredible entrepreneurs here and I'm here to show you guys their story. So let's go. This is our third event and this is easily the coolest venue that we've had it's you can see the entire city of venice and you can see all of la on the other side and we have this awesome rooftop and this awesome space with really good lighting and it's just amazing so we like to start off the events just really being able to open up the space and have a container for people to be themselves and having that energy is really necessary because if you just dive in to doing all the work it doesn't come out and come through you the same exact way as it would if you were able to just be fully yourself and fully present. I'm Danielle. Um, I am hoping to leave fear in the past today and share my light and joy with all of you and absorb all of yours and hold it within me when I go back to Rainy and Gray Seattle so that it shines all year. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Tanner Hobbs. I'm from New Albany, Indiana. My intention today is like just for all of us to dream unlike we've ever dreamed and to have those big visionary goals and but also at the same time stay very grounded and remember why we began a coaching career in the very beginning and like that we just want to help people but we can have big dreams and we can do those things but to remember who we are in the midst of it. I'm Matt, I'm from Washington DC and kind of like she said uh, I just want to continue to uh, to get uncomfortable and stretch my comfort zones. This entire process has been uncomfortable for me and a lot of good things have come as a result of it. Yeah. So I think that's where the uh, where the good stuff really happens. So. Energy is really really good in the room. I feel like people are on their way to getting exactly what they need. Lewis just finished his speech. He's so, he's like the definition of greatness <laughs> and he just instills greatness into everybody else and everybody asked really specific questions to Lewis so they were able to get exactly what they needed. Do you ever deal with like perfectionism? I guess like because I'm a really type A person and sometimes I feel like that gets in my way mm. and like causes blockage to want to go out and do the messy action but I'm like messy action, organization, how do you meet a middle? I just like to get things done and <laughs> being a perfectionism doesn't get anything done. So I'd rather get results than look perfect. That's just me. I've just never been afraid of looking perfect. Because I don't care about what people think about me, I care about results. How do you find like what your passion is if you like a bunch of different things and you're not kind of sure maybe which avenue to go down or where to really invest your time? With? Lead with curiosity. If I'm curious about something, if it's interesting to me, if it's fun for me, then I go into that. But I'm also thinking about how can I make the maximum amount of income with that thing. So if it's not going to be profitable, then it's more of a hobby, right? So it's just something that you enjoy. Like I love surfing, but maybe I don't want to do a business out of it. I just want to surf every morning, then it's a hobby. If you want to make money around it, then you can figure out how you can start a school or create online courses or build surfboards. If you want to do the online stuff or the physical stuff, but that may just want to be a hobby for you. So for me, I think about what's the thing that has the maximum income potential around one of the things I'm passionate about. Because the more income I have, the more impact I can make. But I knew that I just didn't want to feel the fear anymore. And I was willing to do whatever it took to not feel the pain. And I was always like that though. Whenever I was afraid of anything, I would dive in eventually. I was just like, I'm sick and tired of feeling like I can't dance. So I'm going to dance salsa every single day until I feel like I'm a Latin dude. You know I, mean? <laughs> I was just like, I never wanted to feel scared. And even today, I do things whenever I feel afraid, that's when I go all in. And I'm like, okay, it's time for me to like find the mentor, find the coach, practice, practice, practice. Freaking like Drew Barrymore's walking next to me in the green room and I'm like, I'm like where am I, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, do I belong here? Am I ready for this? Am I prepared? Do I have what it takes? Mm -hmm. So all those things came up for me. And then I called my coach um, right before, and I was just like, I don't know. Like, I just don't even know what to do. And he goes, just bring the joy. Smile and bring the joy and be grateful that you're there and make it about the audience, don't make it about you. And that's always been my motto is to like serve the audience to the best of my ability as opposed to making it about me and looking like I need to look perfect, I need to look good, I need to say all the right things, I need to make sure I hit everything they said. If I do that, I'm in my head. 
when I think about the audience, I'm in my heart. Today I taught something new and I think that I was scared to teach something new, something I haven't taught them before, but I literally just read a book the other day that Brian bought and recommended to me. I read 50 pages of it. I taught, um, I got taught it by somebody else about a week ago and I was like, boom, we're gonna teach it to them. And to me, that's the best way to learn something so I can learn best through teaching and I love leading through learning. So I taught them all about story building today and building a story surrounding your brand um, and being able to tell your story with emotion and passion and being able to connect deeply with people in that way. The highlight so far has definitely just been having such a smooth event and I think everyone's just getting what they need and I don't have 25 tabs open in my head because I have we have an event planner for this event. So being able to have things run smoothly without, so like the beginning, the first event that we had, we had about 1200 speed bumps <laughs> all, all at once and I was trying to lead and serve and hold the energy and all that stuff all while thinking of everything else. So. Honestly, the, the best part is just seeing how far we've come and then how much that um, experience helps the students. So I've had a couple students, this is their third event with me in this program, and they're like, it keeps getting better every single time. So that's definitely the highlight. Welcome, Mr. Danny Kiyaza. Today, let's talk about finding our path. We're kind of all on this journey together. So what would it be like to live your life as a work of art, a work of art that's in progress. I want to talk to you about this concept that I call the super self. Uh, this isn't my original term, but this is something that I've come to really embrace as I've developed myself, as I've become more confident, more assured, more self-assured, more, uh, more responsible with the way that I handle my, my life, and just overall more well-rounded. So first of all, it's, it's just growing and developing yourself. And that means physically, mentally, financially, emotionally, spiritually, all the least. With all the resources available to you, becoming more powerful. All of us are here because we want to become more powerful. And a lot of times people think the word power is a bad thing because we think about um, people using power incorrectly. And, and so if, if I were to ask you, hey, do you want to become more powerful? What would you say? Yes, yeah, and that's great. And all of us in here probably feel like that. Now, remember that we're in a group of curated minds. All of us have some common interests. There's a thread through all of us here. Not everybody, if you were to ask them, would say, I'd like to become more powerful, mostly because they probably don't know what that means. But it's very important. It's very important. Becoming more powerful means having the ability to change your surroundings, to change your internal and to change your external as a result. And when you become more powerful, what happens? You're able to really give back. And this is what our goal is, to become at every turn with every revolution around our own personal sun in our own orbit, to become more powerful every time. And everything that we're doing uh, on a daily basis adds to that, that reservoir of power that we're building. Part of your journey and part of developing this power is beginning to see the patterns and the trends in your day-to-day -day experiences. And, and in this way, you're going to start to unfog the glass around life. Sometimes it feels like we're just going through life and things are happening to us and we can only see a few steps in front of us and we're not quite sure what to do next. And it's almost like the anxiety of not knowing what's going to happen is worse than what happens when it actually occurs. Can you relate? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Always wanting to know, always having to know, <laughs> always wanting to be certain. And that uncertainty causes literally a physical tension mm -hmm. in your body because you just want to know. Even if it's a good thing that's going to happen, you've got to know. And so part of this is relaxing into the idea of the fact that you know you're on the path, you know you're on the journey, and as you start to become more reflective of the things that are happening to you, of the people that you're meeting, of the experiences that you're having, you're gonna to start to notice patterns. Now that I'm experiencing these things for the second, third, fourth time, it's not quite as jarring, and I start to notice patterns, the way people treat me and how they end up acting later. The, the, um, the things that happen in my business and how it, how it manifests 
two or three months or two or three years later. Have you guys started to notice some patterns? Yeah, right? As you become more observant, you'll begin to notice these patterns. And when you do, you know that you're on your way. When you start to see that things start happening over and over again, then it becomes easier for you to choose who you want to build with, to determine which direction you want to go. It's not that you can see into the future, but that you've become more observant. You've realized <laughs> that although each situation is unique, there are trends, and then you can start to make decisions from a place of what? Power. Power. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right. If you can see these trends coming, you can act from a place of self-assuredness, or at least much more self-assured than you were when it happened the first time. It's almost like the way I think of it kind of is like, like uh, you know, there's so many great women here. I doubt you have played as much Grand Theft Auto as I have. But, um, yes. But as with all video games, like there's a main storyline, and sometimes there are like optional subplots, and you can go off on those optional subplots, and they're very fun. You know, they're very fun diversions, but they're not the main storyline. And so part of this whole process and this understanding, just like with the journaling, just like with the reflection that we're doing, is to make sure that we're very connected to what our path is so that when we do step out and take this side mission for someone else or for a project that we need to accomplish, we, are, we have enough awareness to step back into what we really want to do so we can keep going forward. Because we don't want to spend too much time on someone else's journey and neglecting ours. Because again, coming back to it, self-development, personal development is the gift that you give others that they don't even know that you're giving that scales to everyone that you meet. And if you divert yourself because you think you're helping others, you might actually be hurting them by not becoming as powerful as you can, by not developing your super self, by not becoming as smart, as confident, as powerful, as wonderful as you could be. So that's my talk for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys took something from I'm really um, just like grateful and appreciative for like the clarity that I received today on my vision and then being able to um, not only have the opportunity but have the choice to build the vision of my dreams with my husband. So. Yeah. I'm grateful to be in a room with people who aren't afraid to level up in life and are constantly striving to be better than they were before and do better and help more and I think that at the end of the day it's just about helping people and that clarity is everything. I'm grateful to be here with all of you for all of you to be so accepting and to feel safe because I think as entrepreneurs it can be really lonely a lot of the time and I feel like you guys are like my coworkers at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. Go into like the group and like I feel safe here and having you guys outside of here so thank you for that. Y'all literally make me want to cry. I'm like sweating. Yeah. My hands are so sweaty. My heart's like beating. But like I'm just so grateful to be your guys' coach and like be also be able to be vulnerable with you and like share things. Like I'm just so grateful for every one of you and you guys are all doing amazing things and I just love you so much. So much love. Like yeah. I'm grateful for just the vibes and the spirit. Like as soon as you step in here, like how freaking cool is it that we're all out there just to serve and help people. And we do that with each other too. And like just knowing that all y'all are gonna go back home and be these little lights all over the world is just gonna make it shine and it's just beautiful, so. I'm just super grateful for Amanda's friend that forced her to move to California. <laughs> <laughs> because like, I was thinking about that, I was like, it's true, like the Influencer Academy wouldn't be here, she didn't think about it and then executed it. And we wouldn't be here and I can't imagine my life not having you guys around. It like one of the things that I struggled most with was being able to find people that I connected with and like Courtney said like I literally felt like I was on this little island alone without a boat or anything like just alone <laughs> and like every single time I'm here it's almost like I get to be with you guys and just like be vulnerable and I'm just so thankful and grateful that everyone is able to be vulnerable and like for the spouses that came here that I honestly did not expect you guys to be vulnerable but it's seeing and being in here with everyone is just like I don't want to leave, but at the same time, I'm so excited to leave to get back on these coaching calls with you guys. And thank you for the alumni yeah. program. I'm super grateful, of course, I'm sure, speaking for everyone, for our coaches, Christina and Tanner and Meg and Carrie. And, I mean, of course. <laughs> uh, but especially for Amanda, without knowing it, she helped me lose 85 pounds. That damn prep life. <laughs> and, and then, without ever knowing it or ever talking to me or ever knowing who I was helped me figure out what the hell I'm supposed to do with my entire life. Like, that's insane. <laughs> I love you.
Oh. Love you too. <laughs> too grateful for is I'm so grateful for the community coaches I think that the last month them being here it stepped up everything it literally stepped up everything and it wasn't me wanting to toss off work to them it was I wanted you to have more support I wanted you to succeed I wanted to make sure that every single one of you had exactly what you needed to make sure that you could move forward and actually just fucking accomplish what you came here to accomplish. And it really just goes to show it doesn't just take one person. There's no one magical person that has all the answers. It just, I'm so grateful for all of you guys. And the second thing is I'm grateful for the opportunity that you guys gave me to give you the opportunity to be here and be the heroes today. Every single one of you showed up as a hero today and I'm just so fucking grateful for all of you, so.